Welcome. Yes, uh, today we performed a cystoscopy for you. And in my cystoscopy, I want to share with everyone what we have found and uh, what, uh, with my experiences after uh, like 100 cases from abroad, I have some experiences, some, some, dis some comments on this disease. And uh, your case was typical. And uh, so I want to share my, what I see inside your bladder uh, with everyone. So we are making this little video. So, in your case, when I go inside first, I see in the trigon the leukoplakia part, the white plaques, they were treated, they were gone. Just little small islands of leukoplakia in the bladder neck and some little islands in the trigon. But the, beneath the tissue was trigonitis, it didn't heal. So when I first see it, of course I know your history, I always think, oh, this is a long this is a result of long-term antibiotic usage long-term antibiotics heal the superficial part but the uh, beneath the, the tissue is still there with the inflammation uh, and reddish tissues we call it trigonitis and other than this uh, when someone uses a long-term antibiotic some in some people it has no side effect all the bladder is healthy, the problem is only in trigon. Uh, but in some people, the bladder uh, wall is getting ill by time. I think it is the effect of long-term antibiotics on normal bladder pleura. We call it pyrobiome. Uh, so, some, in some people, the bladder walls, normal bladder walls, become ill. Your bladder walls was not extremely bad. Just uh, a little tiny membrane was formed over it. When I scrape with the instrument, it shed away. And beneath there, uh, underneath, there was some little tiny bleedings, not extreme again. So I think it, if you, uh, you were continuing this uh, long-term treatment more, uh, all your bladder walls will be more affected and maybe it would become irreversible. So can you tell us your story, uh, how it began and how long you use such medications? Uh, I was using continuously long-term antibiotics uh, 11 months before um, COVID operation. Yeah, before yeah. coming here, 11 months. Uh, and <clears throat> before I started, I had uh, recurrent OTs a uh, few times a year. Yeah, but for how many years? When? How old are you now? I'm 40. 40. And, uh, they, and they begin? Uh, it hum. begins about 20 years ago yeah, when yeah. I was uh, 20. Uh, and this, it was this is a classic story. Most of the people have uh, begin this with the beginning of their uh, sexual life. It becomes more prominent. Mm -hmm. Infections come and go, come and go. Then one day it become continuous. Yes. Do you have a reason why it become uh, permanent in in your case? Um, probably I uh, first of all I uh, got from my GP uh, too short uh, and not uh, acquired good antibiotics. Yes, short term antibiotics short -term. maybe couldn't treat the uh, disease very well, so it become chronic. Yes. Uh, and when it became chronic, were you feeling the irritation every day? It, yes. Was it continuous? It was continuously, every day, uh, some kind of burning in the inside the bladder, like yeah. the trigon and urethra. Urethra and trigon. And I felt uh, pain even in uh, lower abdomen. Yeah, yeah. In pelvic area, you yes. feel these pains. Uh, I had some urgency frequency, but not uh, so so bad. The mm. worst was. Uh, burning and uh, pain uh, and uh, of course uh, I had some hesitation during peeing yeah that means uh, you can start easily you stop and do it again stop and do it again yes but yeah. when I started long term anti antibiotics many symptoms subsided yeah and I was feeling better yeah I really actually but appreciate not, this mm -hmm. uh, treatment so now we can talk uh, his name, Dr. Maloney, very famous guy in, in London, he passed away, but I think his clinic still exists and they haunted. 
I appreciate their work. They help many people. They make the lives more tolerable uh, because really um, before them maybe there is very few doctors dealing with this chronic condition. Uh, so with this treatment, you're, you become more, more you, can, you become better. You better. Say. Yes, it was uh, better. You used cephalexin, right? First I used uh, cephalexin, later I started treatment with uh, Dr. Bangrit from the yeah. United States. Also he deals with, especially with this subject, and many people have too much benefit from their treatments. And he used usually augmenting, right? Yes, I started with augmenting, but uh, it was not uh, helping me. So he uh, switched me to Cefixim mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Monroe. Yeah, plus Postomycin. Postomycin, yes, and I was better. Did, did, you, you, did you do microgen testings? Yes, uh, I was this? with microgen. Yes. Uh, and I was feeling better, even sometimes symptoms three days, yeah. but not completely healed. So uh, I think people think uh, mm -hmm. when they understand that, they can't live without antibiotics. If they stop immediately, the, the symptoms come back. Then they want to uh, have this collaboration as a permanent solution. Uh, and really it works for some of the ladies. In, in my practice in Turkey, I was very confident with this. It, was, it has an 80% uh, success, even more nowadays. Uh, still, it has the same results. But uh, then when people come from abroad, I, I was very surprised when I see for first Marty Simpson's letter. When I entered, I was expecting big leukoplakias everywhere, but no, there was no leukoplakia, just red tissues, trigonitis, and I understand later by seeing many people like that. The long-term antibiotics really heals the superficial layer. The uh, leukoplakia go away in most of these ladies with these long-term treatments. But maybe, there are some people who I don't see. Uh, of course, pe if people come here, they have symptoms, uh, they have problems. So, in these days, leukoplakia has gone, but trigonitis is still there. And uh, I will break this part. During this progression, unfortunately, I see in some ladies the other bladder walls are also affected. In your case, it was moderate, it was not extreme. I'm always looking with fear to other bladder walls, if there will be any bleeding. In your case, when I pushed a little bit, uh, filled with the water, I see in some side walls, some little bleedings, not too much, but little. And there was a membrane covering your uh, bladder walls, and bladder was very thin. Okay, you lose a lot of weight. This may be another reason, maybe your defense mechanisms subsided, deteriorated, uh, and it was, it may be because of your chronic infection or your chronic treatments, of course. Uh, so they made the life more tolerable, but they, they affected your bladder. I think you was in, a, in an edge. If you go further, I think you will pass to the next stage, which the bladder becomes irreversibly affected. Maybe this becomes interstitial cystitis all the bladder walls bleed uh, in your case they bleed but like they stop immediately the bleeding stopped immediately so i think you didn't pass this level and uh, nowadays i change my procedure a little bit uh, i try to improve improve it every day so if this is trigon the first place it moves is the opposite bladder wall the wall that the, the part that comes into contact with the, the trigon when bladder empties. So in your case also, there was a red area in that part. So I fulgrate this part too. And if it bleeds in the other bladder walls, I make some punctates of uh, little fulgrations because when I fulgrate some part, it in, in, in stimulates tissue healing. And there will be new tissue formation, new uh, mucosa formation. And uh, results are better with this uh, <laughs> application so i hope you turn from the edge and uh, now we will try to manipulate uh, i think it's clean now uh, always it is very tricky for you to get rid of antibiotics because uh, 
I know these people uh, very scared to live without antibiotics, to get back the infection again. And these antibiotics, now I am sure for you, they are deteriorating the normal bladder walls. So it is a balance. We have to uh, fight with it and we have to find a way to keep the balance. If we use too much antibiotics, they will still go, uh, for, they will still continue to uh, deteriorate your normal bladder flora. Uh, so we have to deal with it. We will act according to your symptoms. If you are very nicely symptom free, we will try to reduce the antibiotics quickly. Uh, but to, yeah, I uh, planned, we planned together uh, three or four days of meronem with you. It's very uh, ertapenem treatment, uh, meropenem treatment. So we will manage. We will manage. It's different for everyone. Uh, as I said, you turn just from the edge and I am happy that you come and we see the bladder before the, it passes to the next stage. Uh, so, uh, in the, after the operation, we usually give you gentamicin for two hours in the bladder. How do you feel now it's, we open your uh, bladder? Is it too much painful? Is it tolerable? How, what's, how is your comments after the procedure? No painful. Uh, no pain, but uh, constantly move to pee. Yeah. In a, that feeling in the retra. Retra and trigon. Yeah. You are still feeling there's something. Uh, so in a couple of hours you will feel much more better. Tomorrow I will give one more gentamicin to your bladder, uh, and then we will remove the catheter. Uh, as far as I see, retra is healthy. This is just a radiating pain to retra from the bladder from trigon. And then we will continue uh, with, it's manageable. We did it to like 100 cases from abroad and uh, it's doable. Uh, I recommend everyone not to delay too much, not to postpone. Uh, okay, it's not easy to come here to have this fulguration, but you did it, many people did it, it's doable. Uh, and if people are too late, the success of the operation is a little decreasing. So I recommend to do it as soon as possible. If you are sure you cannot stop the antibiotics, you cannot get rid of these antibiotics, uh, I recommend everyone to do it as soon as possible. One question. Yes. Do you think, uh, would I need the second one? Yeah, actually we did the second fulgration for two cases now. And one of them healed very nicely. Then she, after eight months, she began to have a problem again. But in her case, the cervix uterine, cervix of the, the end of, was very inflamed. And I do second fulguration, there were little uh, unfulgrated or newly formed uh, trigonex areas. And in the bladder there were some infected areas, I fulgrated them. And in, this, in her cervix, there was real uh, too much uh, discharge and cervical inflammation. So maybe the reason was that. The second case, uh, she, she didn't uh, completely healed. She always had some symptoms, some symptoms. And when I look at her bladder again, there was a really missed area. I did it with flexible cystoscope. Flexible cystoscope go into the bladder and turn back and look to uh, try one from upside down. It's different than uh, looking with our instruments and maybe our uh, classic instruments are a little weak in seeing some parts of the bladder neck. Mm -hmm. I always try to look very uh, detailed in the very carefully in the bladder neck, all parts, but maybe me, we missed some part in her bladder. I am really <laughs> very careful, try to be very careful Maybe it's newly formed, but with flexible cystoscope, it's very easily seen and we said, okay, let's fulgrate this part too. And we will follow her. We did it uh, last week and uh, we give some ozone treatment uh, for her. So we are always dealing with this uh, disease and try to improve everything. We are not 100% uh, successful yet. And uh, maybe to, for last year, the first 20 ladies coming, very difficult cases, waiting for years, fighting for years. And other than next, uh, after them, 
there were more easy cases. We will see how many of them will need second fulgration. Also, some of them have fulgration with Dr. Van Rick or Viluk. They have a cystoscopy again with Dr. Van Rick, Dr. Zimmer in the United States. So, uh, I can't say the real uh, percentage, but some ladies will need that. Will need repeated fulgrations or cystoscopies. Uh, but it's very early to say what will be the uh, percentage. Yes, we are, the, we are a big community now. We are always in touch and communicating and trying to find the best. Yeah, we will try to help each other. We will try to help you too. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming.